This is the quietest you guys have ever been. All right, so we're moving into angles. Uh, your next quiz will be Monday. It only has two things on it. So if you're looking to get your grades up, I feel like the last quiz was a pretty good opportunity, and I think that I'm talking about the ones with ratios and weighted averages, but that's that, in my opinion, was a little trickier than what we did with midpoints. So if you weren't here for midpoints, you need to go back and watch that video. Uh, I guess it was Thursday for you guys. There's a lot of overlap with what we're going to do today with the end kind of an introduction to angles. I'm not going to get into hold on, let me just finish. The I'm not going to get into anything that's super complex for the next quiz. It'll start getting a little more complex after that quiz. So I would make sure you are ready for that quiz. Just real quickly about grades. Um, the way a lot of students do well in this class, by well, I mean, you know, C or better, is not that they crush every test. It's that they really, really crush some tests and then they at least do okay on other tests. So just as a quick example, we've done averages now. So all the quizzes are weighted the same, no quiz is heavier than the other. So if you have, let's say, 60, hopefully you don't do this poorly, but a zero, and then you have a 70. You average those out, you get 130 divided by three, so it's a 40, that'd be 43-ish. Now, if you can just take away, instead of a 70, make that 100, is really just two letter grades up, but you know you do have to not pretty much not miss anything to get 100. So we didn't change the 60 at all, just change the zero to a 40. And then um, now if we average them, 200 divided by three is a 60, what? Not quite a 70, 68. So it goes up 20 something points. Um, 100s are, are crucial to the to the students in the past that have done well. Like there's a huge drop off, although I've changed my grading a little bit. Uh, Tarvis, no earbuds, but uh, we don't do follow Tarvis. Oh, if you want me to get you out of here, I'll get you out of here. Um, so we're going to hang on to this one already. Uh, for those of you that have been here before when they didn't really do anything about detention, feeling that's going to be different this year. So if you're getting detentions, hope that they are going to follow through with those a little faster than they did last year. When you you know haven't shown up for your detention for the first two or three times you're supposed to. Uh, last year it took forever to finally have anything happen. Um, so anyway, again, huge drop off between being perfect on a quiz, which Perfect sounds impossible. It's it's not that bad. That weighted averages ratio quiz is not that bad. I know a lot of people that won't. They got a hundred on both um, grades on that quiz. So make sure if you are really really getting a lesson, don't be like, oh, I'm good on that. I don't need to study. It should be the opposite. You need to study for those and make sure that you get a hundred on it because it's a big drop off if you do something wrong on it and you don't get the one hundred. You drop all the way down to an eighty for the most part, which is 20 points on something that you really knew how to do. Uh, you're going to have some topics where you just don't get it, and you're going to get some low quiz grades. I mean, not all of them, some of you will get it. There are going to be some that you're like, it's just really tough, and it's going to be hard to get your grade up on those, but when you have a topic where you're kind of getting it, you need to, to really, really crush those quiz grades. Uh, all right, so what is AC called? Does anybody know? Because I'm going to... There's not going to be a vocabulary test. I don't do that, but I'm going to use terminology and you need to understand what I'm talking about. Um, somebody down here. Leslie. Is it midpoint? Not a midpoint for AC. It's a special kind of thing we haven't talked about. If you don't know it, it's not a big deal. 
We haven't talked about it yet. So we're, in, we're introducing a new word that I'm going to be using throughout angles. It is called a ray. So we've talked about a line, right? A line. A line goes on forever in both directions. That's why it has arrows on both ends. We've talked about a line segment, which has two endpoints. It doesn't go on forever at all, either way. It ends because it has end points. Now we have kind of a hybrid between the two. So it's like a... <laughs> Anybody watch Underworld? It's a, it's, there's a vampire werewolf hybrid. So it's kind of a little bit of both. It has an end point on one side and it goes on forever in the other direction. So that's what a ray is. And you would name it still using two letters from it and then the symbol just, I named it. And you, actually you would not be able to flip that. You have to start with the end point when you name a ray and go to the other point. I can't flip them like I could in lines and segments. And you have to have the symbol over it with the one arrow. I will tell you, I'm not quizzing you on naming rays, so that's not super important, but you need to understand it because I'm, I'm not going to do vocabulary every time I start talking about rays and angles. You need to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, So you um, definitely need to understand what, what a ray is when I talk about it, because I'll mention that a lot. And then the next thing you need to understand, which it didn't even I didn't even realize that kids didn't really get this last year. And so I use this terminology all year long, all year long and I don't think they knew what I was talking A lot of them didn't know what I was talking about. You need to know how to name an angle and how to like when I talk about an angle, you need to understand which angle is the angle I'm talking about. Because you're going to get some figures that have a whole bunch of lines coming out of one point. Like here, we just have two rays coming out. And you're going to get pictures where there might be four rays all coming out at one point. You need to know which angle I'm talking about. Oh, well, real quick, really quickly, what is A called? So AC, AB is also a ray. What is A called? Because I'm going to use this word a lot also. This is in your book pages, by the way, if you turn to probably right on page 61, would be my guess. So go ahead, get your book pages out. You're going to need them anyway. I have a little summary thing over here that I'm not handing out right now. Uh, it says all the same stuff that's in your book. I might just make it available if people want to take it. It's, it like I said, it's the same thing that's. It's got extra practice in it, though, if you want to do extra practice from the right side. So go ahead, grab those. What is A called? How would you describe A? What is what is A like? Like those of you that don't know what it's actually called, what would you call it? Tell me what it's called. Okay, I'll just a starting point. Starting point. All right. What do you say? Marcus. I hear corner a lot, is what I hear. So when you see the corner, this is the word you truly need to understand that it's really called. Can you come up with it? See it? Vertex. So that is the vertex. Vertex is, again, it's the point that two, it could be two rays come out of, could be two line segments coming out of it. You have a vertex in shape. So when we deal with triangles, rectangles, squares, Basically, anything that's not a circle, anything that's not rounded, you're going to have a vertex at every corner. So it is kind of the corner of the, the angle. But when you name it, so here's the important part. The vertex is the middle letter. If you remember, I told you there were other shapes that use three letters. We did planes, and I said you had to write the word plane in front of the three letters. Angles also use three letters. So do triangles. So when we name an angle, we have to write
or you asked me, should you draw this in a note? Oh, like before the name of it? Yeah. I'm about to show you that right now. So here's how you name it. And this is the way I will refer to it. So you have to understand when I say angle ABC, which I would not say for this because that's not the way I would, you would name this one, but you have to understand which angle I'm talking about or else you are going to be completely lost. You can't even tell what I'm talking about. I'm erasing it all. Might be the wrong way here. It's because you got the pencil. No, nah, you can erase. Yeah, erase that. Oh, I know why. I um, I sort of like froze the text. Oh, it's gonna take forever to do. Oh, let's see. All right, tell you what. Here we see. Is it back one? Eh, well, back won't work. Dang it! I should have erased it. Huh? Ah, all right, tell you what, start over then. All right, so we have that angle made up of two rays coming out of a vertex. This is the way you would have to name this angle. So again, it's not always just ABC because I have the letters ABC. It doesn't mean you do ABC. I would need a symbol. So like we when we did planes, you have to write something in front. You could write the word angle, but rarely will you see that. You will see this little symbol right here. So that symbol means angle. Again, that should be in your book. It might look slightly different, but it should pretty much look the same. And then the vertex needs to be in the middle. And I can reverse those letters. I can't totally rearrange them. But I could reverse them as long as the vertex is still in the middle. Got to understand. Again, I taught the whole lesson last year, probably the whole year. And I truly believe there were some kids that didn't even know how to name an angle, which means they didn't understand what I was talking about when I talked about it. So that could be BAC or it could be CA. And there's no other way to name it. Pretty much there's only going to be two ways to name it. And well, that's not true. If there were more letters on these, or more points, I should say, if there were more points that they had named, I could now use those points as long as I'm outlining the same angle. So I could call this now angle D A B. Hold on just a second. Angle E A D or other combinations, which I'll show you in a minute. Oh. Okay. That would be I can also now use the other letters, the B and the C, as long as I'm always tracing the same angle and as long as A is always the midpoint. So angle E, A, B would work. Angle B, A, E. Angle, what's my other letter? D, uh, D, A. C would work and angle C A D. So all of those are ways to name the angle. Again, you'll notice the main thing. A is in the middle. The main, main thing, the vertex is in the middle. That's typically what's going to tell you well, there again, there are more complex angles than this, which you'll see uh, probably today. We'll get to it. But if you understand that the vertex has to be in the middle, you should be able to figure out which angle I'm talking about from the other letters that surround the, the vertex methods. 
All right, any questions on that? Again, no vocabulary like on the points, lines, planes, but if, if you don't understand which angle I'm talking about, you're going to be lost. Uh, there's two concepts that'll be on the first quiz. So we're jumping around a little bit, not too much. They are virtually the same concept we just did in one. What did we do in line seconds? Tell me something we learned about line seconds. Co a concept we learned about. Line seconds. Oh, your butt help. What's a concept we learned in line seconds? And by concept, I mean like something I wrote out. In, I might have written a formula in words or equation in words. Those are typically, I get those from a concept. Theory. Yeah, what you got? Uh, earbuds out, please. I have to say that one more time. Again, every time I have to say that, you get farther away from me when I get your phone set. So today we won't be touching them in independent problem. Said that. I mean, you guys have heard me tell two or three people to take them out, and yet you just sat there with me trying to get away. With it. When you try to get away with it, you're going to wind up never touching your phone. So do what I ask. And then we can talk about what you want. Or, well, no, we just get your grades on. Um, so, Gavin, no answer? Uh, no, you just joined us. We didn't. Thank you. Yeah, little plus little. It's going to be the same thing in this. If I draw another ray in, So let's say, okay, now let me start using my prop. A better prop for this. Maybe I will tonight. Works for it. Just easier for you. So I have an angle. You're luck. Grab the blue one. Blue one. So, have an angle. So, the two blue ones represent my starting angle. Oh, how do you measure an angle? Something nobody ever You do measure it with a protractor. Actually, I'm going to measure one for you. Um, just because you need to know this. There are some questions on the district tests that are about creating things. Uh, like, there, I would almost guarantee you, you're going to have to know how to create an angle using tools like not a protractor, like other tools, like what's called a compass. We're probably not going to go over that in class. I do believe I assigned you an IXL. So at some point, oh, we have, speaking of which, we have a district test this week. So Thursday, we'll be taking a district test. We'll be going to a computer lab. Still meet here. Uh, so what you'll do is we'll go there. You'll take that quiz. And then you can practice for the quiz on Monday. So it'll be a combination. You'll only have like 30 minutes to do the, the district test, maybe a little bit longer than that. And then after that, you can either do the IXLs, the McGraw-Hill stuff I signed in, in the online McGraw-Hill, or you can just work in your book pages. Uh, man, I lost some training. Shoot. All right, well, I'll just go back to this. Thing. Oh, we're going to measure. Um, that's what we're going to measure. Do this. <laughs> I don't know if I need to freeze or not. Oh, shouldn't need to. So here is a protractor, a big, big protractor. Oversize. So the way you measure an angle is probably most of you don't remember. Oh, I can't zoom in. Yeah, that'll be fine. So you take, so if you can't really see it, but there's a zero here. This line right here is the zero line. So we're gonna put this middle of, there's a little line there, so right in the middle, I put that line, I put the, the middle of the protractor on the point, and then I put that bottom line, that's the zero line, on the bottom line of the angle. Now, I just see where does 
this line, this ray, where does it hit the protractor up here? Now there are two sets of numbers because I can have an angle that goes all the way over to here, or I can have an angle that stops short. There's like an acute and, uh, and obtuse. Again, I'm not going to do vocabulary. So I use the bottom numbers if I'm going right to left. If the angle, if the angle was facing that way, I'd use the top numbers. Again, you if you just understand that the angle has to be less than 90 or greater than 90, then you, you just know which number to pick. So I would say, okay, well, this line comes out and it hits right here. What is the number that makes sense, basically? And it looks like it's about 44, 45 degrees. Now, if I wanted to do the blue line, same thing. I don't have to move it because I'm using this angle down here or this bottom ray. And now the blue line comes out right here and it looks like that's about 11 degrees. Now, if I wanted to measure a bigger angle, so let's take an angle that comes down like that. Oh, ray, just to make sure. Doesn't have to be a ray to still be an angle, by the way. Like again, a rectangle has angles. Like every corner, every corner of the vertex is an angle. Triangles have angles. So you don't have to have rays. Um, but we are starting with rays because we're only dealing with a shape that's an angle. We're not dealing with other shapes yet, but we will. We'll do a lot of stuff with other shapes, triangles mostly. So again, now I put the, I mean, I don't think I can do this, but I put the protractor on this bottom ray, put the middle point here in the middle of the vertex, and now I follow the line out and now I have to use the bigger number because that is bigger than 90 degrees. So that's like 155, 156 degrees, something like that. What's a 90 degree angle? I use that twice. It's called a right angle. What's it look like? Yeah, it's straight up. It's per two perpendicular lines. So if you remember the word perpendicular, but if you look around all these bricks, well, actually, I guess it's just on that wall and this one. All those bricks, when you see those lines, that's 90 degrees, that's perpendicular. The edges of your papers are, are 90 degree angles. That's what perpendicular means. So if I know that that would be 90 degrees straight up and down, oh, frozen. so if I know that's 90 degrees and the way you show 90 degrees is by that little mark, if you don't remember that little mark, you need to know that means 90 degrees, Anything less than that, anything like again, uh, it's that's why that's what the definition of an acute angle is. It's less than 90 degrees. So any angle that's less than that, more closed, you could think of it as that would be less than 90 degrees. Anything greater than that, so again, you can think of it as more open, would be greater than 90 degrees. So that's one way you can use this is just to understand is the angle going to be less than 90 or greater than 90. Um, that'll also come in handy when you do some math sometimes and you get a number, you should know whether that number makes sense based on what the angle looks like a little bit. Um, all right, so back to little plus little is big. If I have this angle, Somebody tell me what they think that measure of that angle is. It would be acute, but like give me a number. Is it less than or greater than 90? Less than 90, so we know it's less than 90. Would you say it's bigger? We said this one was about 45. Would you say it's less than 45 or about 45? I'd say it's a little bigger than 45. I should have given you the third option. I should have said all three, but. I would say 45, like if I just put it up there, 45, you can see 45 is definitely less than this. So this would be more than 45. Because think about it, if you drew a line in between, like right in the middle of 90, that would be 45. Well, this wouldn't be like if this was 90. If this was 90 here, that's not in the middle. Like it's definitely more straight up and down than in the middle. So that's how you estimate angles. Think about what 90 would be. Think about what the middle of 90 would be, because that'd be 45. And then say, okay, well, it's got to be less than 90, more than 45. So we'll say uh, 60 ish, right? So that's 60 degrees, we'll say. 
Now we do what we did in line segments. I, I can't really do it with this. In line segments, I broke the pencil and I said, what's true about the two smaller segments? Well, if you add them up, they would be the length of the original line segment. It's the same thing. If I now separate this angle into two angles, this is the part that I was going to do at home or something. Good enough. So I separated. Now I got two angles. Well, what's true about those two angles? They're both less than 90. What else? Yeah, it's little plus little is big. I didn't change the original angle. I didn't mean to. I didn't change the original angle. I just created two angles out of it. I just stuck this in the middle of it. Well, if I didn't change the original angle, if I just created two angles, that angle plus this angle have to equal the original angle. It's still little plus little is big. Same. Now, that's not going to record very well, so I'm going to try to show it. So again, if this original angle was 40, what do we say, 45. When I drew that blue ray in, I didn't change the, I didn't, I didn't change anything about that original angle. It was 45. So therefore, this angle here plus this angle here would have to equal that original angle, that original 45 degree angle. So again, same concept as what we did in line segments. Little plus little equals big. Um, I'm going to just tell you the other concept, and then I'll probably let you start doing problems, and then I'll come back with problems. Mm -hmm. So the only other concept that we're going to add in is a bisector. What did we say a bisector was? Hopefully we said it in this class. One class, I think they're going to say it. But we'll learn it. What? Okay. It does what? So it, it cuts something in half, we said. So again, if you don't have that written down, or just even if you do, just write it again. A bisector basically cuts something in half. It splits it into two equal halves. So when it came to a line segment, We said a bisector goes through the midpoint. So if we drew a, a line, so we're saying that point is the midpoint. If we draw a line through that, which I kind of missed it, but that's fine. If I can fix it. If we draw a line through the midpoint, then it splits the other line in half. So that green line is a bisector of the red line. Split that red line into two equal halves. Normally you would do it with line segments, so I should have I should have put arrows. I should have put let's fix that as well. Because you don't really there's no half to a line because it goes on forever. So you only really have bisectors and segments. So you can bisect a line segment. You can't really bisect a line. Now this can be a line because it's the bisector. So we're not splitting the green line in half. We're splitting the red line. So, so that green line is a bisector if it splits that line segment into two equal segments. If I draw in an angle, actually, let's do it with this. I think there's any way to put angles in shape for angles, but there might be. What's that? Is it? How do we know? What if it's 89.99 degrees? It's not a, yeah, you don't know what that is yet. So this is important. It will come into play potentially on my quizzes or district. The only way you know, there's only two ways to know it's a, well, three ways, I guess. They could tell you it's a right angle. They said such and such is a right angle. So in words, they could say angle. So there's, they could say. Oh, 
It's that way. Oh, okay. Oh boy. Oh, I should have gone. Uh, Cooper, Shade, Vanessa, I haven't seen it forever. Um, you guys are super late, so. Yeah. I didn't know we were still testing. Um, so, angle. X, Y, Z is 90 degrees or is a right angle. That's one way they might just tell you in words. Uh, they could tell you that the measure of angle, so measure means you're going to get a number. They put that little M, so here's more notation you need to understand. When we just put this, we're really just talking more about the shape of it. The shape is a right angle. You got to go, yeah. Yeah, you, you guys go. Yeah. And you're supposed to be there at 730. So they may send you right back. I don't know. So the the shape of it is a, a right angle. The shape of it is a 90 degree angle. This means the measure of it is 90 degrees, the number. So it's a little confusing. I won't always put the M in front of it when I'm talking about numbers, but theoretically I should. So this tells you the measure of the angle is 90 degrees. That tells you it's a right angle. And then the other way to tell you, as I already showed you earlier, that symbol right there tells you it's 90 degrees. So if you don't see one of those three things, do not assume it is a right angle. they got to tell you in some way it's a right angle. Uh, I'm not saying they don't make mistakes, and sometimes they, they, are, they want it to be a right angle, but they forget to tell you it's a right angle. That does happen. And, in worksheets, probably even the district tests. So if if there's only one way to solve it, and that's by assuming it's 90, go ahead and assume it's 90. But they really should tell you something about the angle it tells you it's 90. So now, if we draw in a line, so now let's say I tell you that information. Somehow I tell you it's a right angle. And I tell you this. I was doing so well on that first part. Mm, and they probably say it this way. Sex. What does that mean in red? So I want you to think about it for a minute and then we'll talk about it. I'll let everybody think about it for a minute and I'll actually not call this. Yeah, we'll call it. <clears throat> but people are still copying, so I'll wait a second. This is the last concept, and I'll let you do some problems, and then I'll probably have to do some examples, but you should be able to do some of them. And this will, oh, uh, I don't think it was this class, but somebody said what was on. Actually, more than one person. What was on such and such quiz? Like for a retake? Remember, it's color coordinated. So, first quiz, blue. Second quiz, red. Third quiz will be the black stuff. So, if you ever need to study for a quiz, now I have a review video for just the naming points, lines, and planes. So, if you weren't here last class, there are two review videos. One review video is just points, lines, and planes. So I didn't do one for the line segments part. You need to practice that on your own from either watching the old class lessons or you can just do the IXL. I think they're act that's one of the one of the IXLs that is, is actually pretty decent is the line segments one that I assigned. I also assigned in the McGraw Hill a, a line segments 
set of problems, which I think is the same as the book set of problems that you did, but you can get help on it. Um, I did do a review video for, for putting a line on or putting a point on a line using ratios and weights. I did a review video for that. And then we haven't taken this picture. All right, so who am I going to call on? Adam. What does that mean if I say W? Tell me, there's actually several things you could say, but what does that mean if I say WYZ bisects CYX? What does that mean? Like we know the definition that says half, but what does that mean relative to the angle? Use either terminology or numbers. What does that mean? You're just telling me, I already told you the definition of bisector if it splits them in half. We already know that. What does that mean if it splits it in half? Tell me something else. Take it to the next level. Level up. Think about it. What do you know when I tell you in the original problem before the red? Read it. I told you in the blue. I tell you. So if the outside angle is the 90 degree angle and we just split it in half, what do we do? How many angles are in the figure now? Are there two? How many angles are in the figure? Three angles. Nope. Three. I have the big angle still. That didn't go away. I didn't erase anything. And now I have two smaller angles. So again, we did this in line segments. What was the concept? We first learned in line segments. In words. I said in words. Little plus little equals big. And taking it one step farther because I know I split it in half. I'm going to now use something else you learned about that angle there. So this is how we do congruence marks and angles. We do a little curve and check mark instead of a straight line. Those angles are congruent. They are the same measure. So if I say that that red ray Y W is bisecting XYZ, then it's creating two congruent angles. Just like if we put a midpoint, it created two congruent angles up here. I'm sorry, two congruent segments. Those segments were congruent. It's the same concept. The, the mark is different, it's curved, but it's still just one little tick mark. So that's, the main concept you need to know for a bisector. Now, little plus little equals big still applies. The little plus the little is the big. But more importantly, if you know it's a bisector, you need to understand that those two smaller angles equal each other. So there's all kinds of problems you could get where maybe I only give you the measure of this angle. Well, then you need to know that the measure of this angle is the same as that one, so you write that in both places. Uh, maybe I don't give you the measure of the big angle on the outside. Maybe I don't tell you it's 90 degrees. All I tell you is what the two little angles are. You need to know, well, I can set these two angles equal to each other, just like we did in midpoints. We set the two segments equal to each other to solve for X. We did midpoints last class. Um, now, last thing, and then I'll let you start doing problems. Super late. I don't have to have a right angle to bisect it. So I can have a that line segment there. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a bisector stretch there. So again, if that angle right there is 40 degrees, we'll say. That angle is 40 degrees. Oh, the angle measure is normally going to be written inside the angle. The one thing they might do, and I'm actually going to do it here. They might also do this. If there's not tons of room, sometimes they'll like draw a little arrow in like that and show you that it's 40 degrees that way. So, and 
a lot of kids get confused when we get into triangles and other shapes about when they're talking about the length of a side versus the measure of an angle. An angle will always have a little degree symbol. So look for that. If it's, there's no degree symbol there, then they're probably talking about the length of a side. That won't happen as much in angles as it will when we get into other sh actual shapes. So X, Y, Z. So if I draw in this here, is that a bisector? The middle ray, the ray YW, is that a bisector? Are you saying you don't want to answer or no, it's not? You must be tired. Is that a bisector? YZ? Well, you should all know that immediately. What's the definition of a bisector? Yeah, it is. Did that split that angle into two equal angles? Not even close. This angle is way smaller than this angle. No, that is not a bisector. Not even close to a bisector. But little plus little is still, little plus little equal big is still correct. That will still be the case because I didn't change the outside angle. Actually, let's do. I didn't change the outside angle. Like that was my original angle. Right? I drew a ray in between them. But I didn't change the outside angle, so whatever that original angle measure was, it's still that same measure. So what has to be true, and this is the way you would write your equation, angle Z, Y, W, plus angle, and you could, again, there's different orders. I could make it W, Y, Z, like this one starting with the X. equals the big angle. That is little plus little equals big. Same exact concept, just now we're dealing with angles instead of with line segments. If I'm splitting that original angle into two smaller angles, those two smaller angles added up have to equal that bigger angle. And then if they tell you it's a bisector, you know the two smaller angles have to equal each other. But they would still add it up equal the big one also. That, that doesn't change. So using those two concepts, I'm just going to assign you some problems. You should be able to get through the, the first few because they'll be the easier ones. Uh, and then I'll probably do another one in about 10 or 15 minutes that's a little bit more difficult. And I don't have... Whoops. Oh, wait, yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's see what page of the problem start on. That's probably not been 67. All right, so turn to 67. Yeah, end of first lesson. Uh, you, I want you to go ahead again. I won't put anything on the quiz, but you need to understand when I talk about it, what the vertex is, how to name an angle, which angle I'm talking about. So I want you to still do the first few problems. You may not be able to solve using the algebra, but you should be able to set up the problems in six through 11. So right now, it's one through 11. You're going to wind up doing more than that, but for now, 1 through 11. Now, I have two more concepts I'm going to tell you. Through 17. 34.
I always just put the starting page when I put problems up. And I'll be walking around. So now that. I don't care if you work together, but if you're together, you need to be working. <clears throat> this is. It's going to get a little harder after this quiz, so it's going to be probably your. Your easiest quiz of the ones that are will be left this quarter. Probably only have two more quizzes this quarter, two more new quizzes. Oh, and don't forget your deadline for that one is this Friday. You you haven't you come into me Monday and you take the quiz. Uh, yep, too late. Deadline time. Fair if you're absent on that Friday. That one week plus this one. Uh, I'm going to do attendance and I'll start walking around and checking and helping. That should be enough to get you going. Uh, oh, shoot. I'm not going to do attendance. I forgot. Recording. Right, if you have questions, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hold off on attendance. If you have questions, I'll walk around. Um, I didn't tell you one more thing. I totally forgot. Well, I didn't really. If it if it has numbers in the angle, that's another way to name the angle or to talk about the angle. So, let's see what's a good one. Let's zoom back in. So I could put. A number, let's see, let's go to black. Put a little number one right there and a number two right there. So number one is referring to angle. I don't know. <laughs> M, I don't know. M. So number one is referring to the angle in purple, basically. You see the purple line goes up. I don't know, like. Can't see it as well on top. I don't know why. Let's do that again. Oh, uh, it looks that's right. If I highlight it in yellow, it changes it to red. So the red line is is actually supposed to be purple. The yellow highlight actually turn changes it purple. So number one means angle one. It refers to D A M, or you could say B A M. So that's another way to name them is with numbers. So number two refers to angle M A E or M A C or C A M or E A M or whatever. 
So when it's asking for you for the vertex, again, the vertex is the pointy part, the corner. It's the middle letter if they give you a name. So A would be the vertex for three angles. It'd be the vertex for angle one, angle two, and then for the big outside angle also. So you're going to have used the same letter a lot, probably. Well, I don't know. I don't know how many times they ask you about vertex, but just remember, the corner of the angle is the vertex. So for angle one, I would say, well, the corner of angle one is A. So A is the vertex. We'll go, we're going to give the answers to certainly the first four. So just try to figure it out, and put it down, and we'll share the answers and talk about it. But I want you to try it on your own. Let me just tell it. Think about what is the corner of that angle? So every time I walk around, I see nothing on papers. You get farther and farther away from phone. So do what I'm asking you to do in class. That's how you earn that privilege back. Don't care about phone. On this one, <laughs> see the box of images. It's kind of a bigger one. Here. Uh, sides are typically, like I said, going to be raised, but they could be line segments. They could be uh, uh, really just raised and line segments. You can't see a, a line of the side of them. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess if you want to name it, there's really only two sides. Of it, so. Can not just put that. So remind me to go with that. You know why you can't just put that here. If you say angle B, do I know which angle you're talking about? A whole bunch of angles for the angle B. And just say D. Angle one, there's only one angle for one piece. Give me more information. Well, yeah. Let's see. But I still remind you to go to that. I mean, hopefully you'll both come out. Gentlemen, 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 just like talking about being. Interaction on the question mark because we have to do the work, do all the quizzes. But just understanding the concepts and not how to solve them. Oh, you know. uh, this would not be a way to name it because A can do that angle, they can do that angle, that angle, that angle. So you got to do more than that. That's the same thing that agree. So a lot of you are putting. For the name, the angle, another way, you're just writing one letter. You can only name an angle with using, like, for example, I can't say angle one. So everybody, look up here. This is a mistake I've seen on several pages. I can't say another way to name angle one. So again, angle one is in there, so it's talking about that angle. I can't say another way to name angle one is angle A. Because angle A is the vertex for three different angles. I don't know which angle I'm talking about by saying angle A. Am I am I talking about just the little angle? Am I talking about this little angle? Am I talking about the big angle when I say A? 
So you cannot just use a letter. The only time you can just use a letter if it's just like oops, like this. And again, I would that was that was imagined just to show you what a right angle looked like. If I just have that, there's only one two sets of rays. Then yeah, and then this was point A. I could say that's angle A. There's no other rays or line segments or anything coming out of that point. There's only one angle that could be. As soon as I draw in another line, though, I, I don't know which angle angle A is talking about. Now, is it still talking about the big angle? Is it talking about this little angle? Is it talking about this little angle? So most of the time, you're going to need three letters to name an angle or one number. You can use one number a lot of times because they will just put a one and a two in the smaller angles or whatever numbers they use. Uh, go ahead, wrap that top section up, and we'll go over it, and i got to tell you the next piece. Actually, let's just go over now. Most people, I think, we're done. I think it's that's really have the right answers. So what is an answer for the first question? Who am I going to call on? Nayland. What's the answer for the first question? Well, again, we I don't think I haven't. I don't think we can just say A for that one. Just like I just said. So if you look at angle one, there's and, and if you were to say A, how do you know A is not talking about the angle above angle one, top of angle? You can't just say A for that. You got to specifically tell me angle one is talking about kind of the upside down. Oh, I have this in. Hold that thought, Brian. I have this actually in the. Uh, oh, wait, wrong thing. Yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah, I have a bunch of stuff on constructions. If you need to go back and look at. If you need to go back and look at the examples, remember all these problems refer to example one. So you can go back and look at example one to help you with it. So when we're talking about angle one, this is you can call it angle one. Angle one is just talking about that angle. You see a number in there. It's only talking about that angle. From a letter standpoint, though, a is a point. It's the vertex. I can't call angle one A because I might be talking about this angle for A. A is the vertex for that angle also. A is actually the vertex for several angles. A is the vertex for this angle. So I can't just say A. The number is specifically referring to this upside down V, the red. But A is the vertex for all four of those angles all the way around. So you cannot say A. You'd have to specifically give me letters. So does anybody think they have the right answer? Brand. I'll come to you next. So what would it be? I mean, there's a couple of them, but. Again, A is the vertex, so it's in the middle. And then you need to tell me two other points that tell me which direction I'm going from A. So you'd have to use three letters. Now you could have used CAD and reverse them. So if you did that, that's fine. I really don't think there's any other way to name that. There's not any other letters that you can use. So it would have to be either DAC or CAD. Uh, what are the sides of angle four, Adam? Do you want that one? Sides of angle four? I'll come back to you on three, which is the name again. So where'd I stop? Bricklin, what are the sides of angle four? So Camila, come back to Brooklyn. Sides of angle four. So again, when I went over this, I got no question. This is what frustrates me. If I go over something and you're not getting it, hands should be shooting up. So you better have answers for me if you haven't asked questions. That means you knew it. You didn't ask the question. Got to get over this. Because I guarantee you're not the only one. You see, nobody else knows the answer. You're not the only one that's lost. Nobody has the guts to admit it, but half the class is lost. I guarantee you. I haven't taught this class too many years, but 
Trust me, half the class is lost every time I do a lesson. Typically, nobody's willing to admit it. So if you're brave enough to do it, you're helping out the whole, or not the whole class, some people's. Ben. Well, I just want the sides. You're giving me the name of it, which that would work. ACD would be another name. So if I wanted to name the angle another way, ACD, so what would the sides be then? CD is one of the sides, and it would be a, you could say it's a ray, so you could say it's a segment, a ray, doesn't really matter, as long as you know the letters, and then what's the other side? And then CA. So again, that's, that's sort of how you get the name is by using the two sides and, and then just only naming the vertex once. So C, which was named twice, is the vertex. So, so the angle itself, if you just kind of wanted to test yourself, the name of that angle could also be ACD. Or I could flip them and do DCA. Again, the vert, wait, yeah. The vertex has to be in the middle. Uh, Isaiah? Or re say what now? Are you saying for another name? No, you can't. The numbers are only one number. That's all you can do with a number. There's no, there's no like combining numbers to make it. Angle four is just angle four when it comes to numbers. Angle three is just angle three. Angle two is, is that what you're saying? Like, were you trying to name four another way with numbers? Yeah, no, ang there's no way to use numbers for it. It's got to be letters after that. Um, question or? Yeah, good. Um, switch the letters around. As long as the vertex is in the middle, that's what I did here. So instead of ACD, I can do DCA. No, but on the C A. Yeah, yeah, C A D. Yeah, you can do that. I said that. I didn't write it. Good question. Good question. Uh, now, Adam, number three. So another name for angle three. So first of all, let's recognize which angle we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got a call for something, you can always stick up. Yeah, if you got something quick to step out for and come right back in, you can like grab a tissue, kids go outside with tissues the the blow their nose or whatever all the time. You don't even need to really ask for that. But I appreciate it if you do. Uh and how can I zoom in? Because this is not in spot Uh let me just do this. There we go. So angle three, we're talking about this angle here. That's angle three. So to name it, we have to put the vertexes in the middle. What's the vertex? How? What's the vertex of that angle? The one in green, angle three. We're doing problem number three. So the vertex is what? D, right? So here's the vertex. So that's got to be in the middle when I name it. And now I just pick a letter that's on the two rays going to out from that angle. And there's only, oh, actually, yeah, there are uh, multiple options. So this is a good one. Let's say it again. Uh, well, E wouldn't be on the green line, right? E's over there. My my angle is going oh, this direction. A you you got to make sure. So what would the name of it be? Say it correctly. The whole thing. Get all the letters, but you got to put them in the correct order. It's actually, angle it's actually. So it'll be angle, so we do the symbol first, angle, A, D, C would work, because we got to put that in the middle. The vertex has to be in the middle, and it's got to be three letters. Still the word one. What's another way? So now try to name it another way, Leslie, now that we have that one. Yeah, you could flip them. Again, it's just got to be points that are on the two rays that go out. And then the vertex in the middle of those two points. So C is on this ray going out. So when I say the two rays going out, those are the sides of the angle. So you got to pick a point from one side and a point from the other side and put the vertex in the middle. So we can pick a point from one side. So here's a point from one of the sides. Here's a point from the other side of the angle. And then we put the vertex in the middle of those two points. What else can we name? So we could also do, we said CDA. 
What else can we do? This one actually has other options. Uh, Camila, now I'll come back to you. What's another option we could do? Well, is E on one of the sides of the angle? So you can't, if it's not on one of the sides of the angle, you can't use it. But what is on one of the sides of the angle? Another letter we didn't use yet. B, so what would you be able to name it? Remember, pick a letter from one side, a letter from the other side, put the vertex in the middle. A, D, B. So again, I could say A, D, B, and then I can reverse those. B, D, A. And that's really it. We can't use E. E is not on a side of that angle. We can't use E to name it at all. It's not a vertex. It's not part of one of the sides. So just those four, really. And then, of course, angle three, they gave you that part. You could just say it's angle three. So make sure you understand we cannot just say angle D. That doesn't give me enough information. There's all kind of angles that come from angle D. There's three, two, this angle over here comes out of angle D, this angle over here. There's actually then bigger angles that come out. These angles, that angle has got D as a vertex. So there's all kind of angles coming out of D. I don't even know how many. There'd be 20 angles probably coming out of D. So you can't just say D. Got to give me three. And just put it this way. It's always safest to use three letters. If you're ever confused, if you just understand you can always use three letters, assuming they give you three points, then that's the safest way to do it. Just always use three letters when you're talking about it. And I'll typically use three letters myself. Even if I say the number, I'll repeat it as the three letters. Uh, all right, so go ahead. Oh, I got to tell you one more thing. Uh, all right, so now let's go back to my pencils. Don't need all three of them for this. So here's the next concept you need. So we talked about angle, right? This is 70 degrees ish, something like that. We said if, if I tell you that they are perpendicular, oh, this is another way to tell you it's a 90 degree angle. If I tell you the lines are perpendicular, I didn't mention that one earlier. So if I tell you the lines are perpendicular, that tells you 90 degrees also. So they, I think I've showed you three ways they can tell you something 90 degrees or a right angle. Saying the lines are perpendicular also says they're 90 degrees. So if I keep going, the angle starts to get bigger, right? So now I'm greater than 90, greater than 90. I now get to like this. Let's measure that. A line, a straight line. So you need to write this down. Even if you think you know, but for some reason, is this is the hardest. I wouldn't say it's the most difficult concept. It's the one they forget about the most when we get to solving problems, doing proofs, everything. A, again, I took this line and I just opened it all the way up, right? Until it was basically two flat rays, two rays going in opposite directions. That is 180 degrees. It's still an angle, but it's 180 degrees. So here's the, the concept that comes from that. Um, that for some reason, kids just for completely forget about. When we start doing problems and get into other lessons. Hmm, I prefer you ask before you, did you go get a one? Oh, let's try. <coughs> Um, let's just start a new screen. So if I have a line. Now again, could be a line segment, could be a, this could be an actual line. What? Did not mean to do that. Oh, that is a step. All right. Uh, all right. All right, that's fine. Thanks. Thought that was a an actual line, but apparently not. Fix it? Nope. Sure did. So I'm gonna make it a line. It really doesn't matter. It could be array, a segment, a line, doesn't matter. 
So again, what is the measure of that angle? You can think of it as an angle. Let's say there was a point that we had. Oh. Shoot, we're going to do it here. So there was a point. We open that angle all the way up. So it's what? So when I do this, and I draw in, and I now create angle one and angle two out of that. So there's three angles there technically now. Angle one, angle two, and then the straight angle, the line. It's an angle still. What's true about angle one and angle two? This is little plus little is big. Just like when we had a smaller angle and we said, well, if I draw an angle in between, little plus little is big. This is still little plus little is big. The measure, technically I should do that, probably. Um, and then I didn't really name this, so we'll name it. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to be the measure of the big angle, which is straight line. But what's true about the measure of the big line we said? We know the measure of the big line because we said it was a straight line. It was a straight angle. So what's the measure of the big line? So we could change this. Now I'm going to start taking shortcuts. I'm going to not write the measure part every time. That concept right there, for whatever reason, probably the main concept kids forget that you have to use a lot in geometry. If you have two lines, I'm sorry, two angles, that they have to be adjacent, they're part of the same line, like the bottom sides of these two lines form, I'm sorry, those two angles, they form a straight line. Right, the bottom side of angle one and the bottom side of angle two form a straight line. Then they add up to 180. Here's the other thing that I started doing later in the class. If two angles are next to each other, or three or four, it could be multiple. If you can draw what is, how many degrees in a circle? Do you remember that? There's 360 degrees in a circle. So if you didn't know that, we learned it a long time ago. Um, so, um, oh, yeah, yeah. So if I drew two perpendicular lines through that, I'd have four 90 degree angles, right? So the degrees, and again, you don't really know this yet, but the degrees in a circle are 360 because if I draw two perpendicular lines, I have 90, 90, 90, and they do actually match up with the degrees in the circle. You learn that later when we do circles. I uh, can't think of another way to really, well, yeah, sure. If I have a straight line, we just said that's 180 if I open it up, right? So if I then kept going all the way around and I got back to the original starting point, so I took, I took this one ray, so, and I open it up, I get to 90, 180, add another 90, 270, add another 90, 360. So whatever you need to do to remember it, you got to remember 360 degrees in a circle. Ah. So if there's 360 degrees in a circle, that's half of a circle, that would be 180 degrees. Um, there, a straight line is like two. 90 degrees added together, right? If I took two 90 degree ang angles, and if I put those together, again, the bottom would be a straight line. 90, uh, 90 plus 90 is 180. So whatever you got to do to remember, straight line is 180. If I split it into two angles, add it up, they give me 180. One plus two is going to be 180. So the name of that, there's actually two names sometimes. They're collinear because they're on the same line. You learn that in point lines and planes. So two points are collinear, or I 
think the way the book calls it, you'll see it called a linear pair. That means that they're adjacent to each other. Oh, we didn't really talk about adjacent. Adjacent means that they share a side. So these two angles, angle one and angle two, share this side. That's the left side of angle two. It's the right side of angle one. So that, that vocabulary term is in your book somewhere, but adjacent means they share a side. They're just next to each other. Like they're touching next to each other and touching. That's all it means. That's adjacent. So if they are adjacent, they're touching, they share a side, and they may, oh, um, so a semicircle, what is half of a circle then? How many degrees? It's 180, right? So if I can draw a semicircle through the two angles, then that means that they have to add up to be 180. So that's another way to think of it. If you drew a semicircle, semicircle has 180 degrees, so one and two have to add up to 180 degrees. So somehow, though, I don't care how you remember it, either the bottom part of the angles makes a straight line. It, a lot of kids, for some reason, the semicircle thing worked better for them. So if you can draw, and that works with, it doesn't matter how many lines I draw out of it, if I drew more angles out of it, again, I still have that semicircle. So all of these angles, now I have to put more numbers in. So angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four have to add up to 180 degrees because that semicircle is 180 degrees, which means that plus that plus that plus that have to equal that 180 degrees. Uh, I don't I didn't even really show this, but the way you kind of show an angle. Is that like that little symbol kind of means the measure of that angle or something so. A lot of times you'll see that it can be if, if I put the same mark in two angles and it means they're congruent like we did before. Sometimes you'll just see one mark there, but I don't know if the book does that much or not. Uh, all right, so. If two angles bisect each other. We know they're equal, so I think in problem six and you can go back and look at the example in problem six. Six through, well, really five through 11. Let's just do another problem. I have an angle. And I tell you this ray, even though that's not a good one. Oh, actually, let's see if I can fix that. So if I tell you that ray, that ray bisects that bigger outside angle. What's that mean? Into? So if I were to name the angles, and I don't even really need the bigger angle in problem six or five through 11. So if I have angle one and angle two, what's true about angle one and angle two? They have the same measure, right? So the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. Pretty sure this is what they're doing in every single problem. Yeah, they're at least in the first. Let me go all the way down to the last one just to make sure. E, B, C. Oops, actually, I'm not. Well, we'll come back to the ones that don't work this way. All you're doing is you're saying, OK, well, if I know the measure of angle one and measure of angle two, which they're giving you those measures in variables, so maybe this is 2x plus 7, and maybe this is, which probably this probably won't make any sense, but 7x subtract 10, well, then I just, Say, OK, well, then I just plug these in. This is just like in a line segment. This is the measure of angle one. Doesn't matter that it's got numbers and variables in it. That's the measure of it. It's just a number. I don't know what that number is yet, but that is some number. Again, 
This is also some number, just represented a different way, just like when we did line segments. It's like when I said $20 could be different. We all have $20, but we have it in 20 different ways. That's what we're about to do. So I know the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two, right? Everybody was pretty good with that. Well, what's the measure of angle one? 2x. Well, I just write 2x plus 7. What's the measure of angle two? Well, I just, so this is called substitution. If I know these two are equal, well, I know the measure of angle one equals 2x plus 7. So if I know measure of angle 1 equals this, I can substitute for angle 1 that 2x plus 7. That's the math concept which we'll use when you do proofs, is we're substituting in. If two things are equal to each other, we can substitute something in. Again, using money, four quarters is equal to a dollar. If I go into the store, I can, instead of putting a dollar bill, I can substitute four quarters for that dollar bill. They're each at the same value. So I can substitute in for angle one that because they're equal. They have this, they are the same thing. So now doing the algebra is a little trickier. We'll work more on that. Um, the IXLs will have the algebra in it and show you how to do the algebra. You need to think you have variables on both sides, but you will a lot of the time when it's bisector problems, you need to think about getting rid of the variables on one side. So if I want to get rid of these, I need to subtract out 2x to get rid of it. And then whatever I do on one side, I do on the other side. So that goes away. I have 7 equals 5x plus 10. And now you should be able to solve a two-step equation. So I'll let you finish that one. And remember, they may want to know the measure of the angle. So when you solve for x, you need to say, OK, wait a minute. Did they ask me what the variable was or did they ask me to solve for something else using the variable? And typically in geometry, they're going to ask you what the measure of the angle, is, not just to solve for x. Sometimes they'll do both. I did mean minus 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy just wrote it wrong. That was that was not a to try to trick you or anything on purple. I just tell you what it was. Gotta be careful. So you should be able to get through those problems through maybe not all of 6 through 11, but uh, and then doing 12, 13, 14, those shouldn't be too difficult. You're just measuring. Oh, actually, number 14, you need to try number 14. Actually, go to number 14 first. Everybody do 14 first, then come back to six through. Then come back to six through 11, five through 11. So look at 14. That's a pretty simple one, but. Until you've done a few of those, it's not always as simple. Oh, I have one more thing I haven't even shown you. God dang it. We're still going to do the quiz on Monday. I don't know how I can get this lesson in when you're we're I'm probably going to limit you on your time on that lesson on uh, Thursday. I mean, the time on the, the quiz like they just want data. I, it's it's worthless data anyway, because some teachers haven't even covered some of the material. So I'm it's just I hate the way that they do the testing. <laughs> we need to get through material. Like this, so yeah, it's always like this. Geometry is. I was hoping they would adjust the the pacing guide, but they didn't. They changed it, but they didn't. They didn't. Maybe if anything, we have less time. Um, here, one more thing. I just I'll just tell you this real quick. It's a pretty quick one. Again, one of the most common ones you're going to use in geometry, but yet one of the ones kids forget about the most. If you have two angles that are opposite each other, then they have the same metric. Like if you have two lines that cross, so an X, you're looking for an X in a figure. And it's not always just two lines like this, like it could be this kind of figure. 
but you're looking for an X. You see how there's an X in the middle of that. The angles that are on opposite sides, whatever word you need to use, understand they are across from each other. Like you, if you use your own words, they have the same measure. So whatever the measure of that one is, the measure of that one is that same thing, the one below. And the same thing would be true of these other two. Actually, I'm going to use the correct notation. These two have a different measure, but again, they would be the same as each other. And I'm just going to show you quickly if this helps why that's true. Show me the I'm just going to get it through. Save time. If I know the measure of this angle is what? 110, we'll say. Probably not. 110. What do we say about two angles that sit on the same line? Because this, this angle here and this angle are on the same line. Um, well, yeah, but let's talk about why. Those two angles are on the same line, right? Remember the semicircle thing? So what's that mean? That the other side is less than the other. Well, specifically, what is it? They have to add up to 180. So what's this other angle over here? 70. Well, wait a minute. Isn't it true, though, that that angle sits on the same line as that? semicircle. So what's this other angle going to be? If they're on the same line, they have to add up to what? So what's that one got to be? Ta -da. That's why they have to be equal. Because they always have to add up to 180. So this angle then has to be 70 because it sits on the same line as or yeah, this angle sits on the same line as this angle, which means they have to add up to 180, which means that one has to be 70. So that's the concept behind it. But again, if you really just remember that other rule, that two lines, two angles that sit on the same line have to add up to 180, it kind of gets you to where you can figure out the vertical angle part. Or, I mean, hopefully you can just remember two angles across from each other at the same. If it's dead straight lines, it has to be straight lines. Same measure, so same degrees. So again, these are across from each other, 110 and 110. These are across from each other, 70 and 70. Anytime you see an X in a figure, because it's not always going to be as simple as just two lines like that. You're going to get some more complex figures, like I just drew one, I'll draw it again. That's a pretty common one there. Well, these two angles have the same measure, and not that you would ever use them because they're totally outside the figure, but those two have the same measure. There's a bunch of figures that fall into this category where you have an X somewhere in the middle and you're going to wind up. You, oh, this is called vertical angles, by the way. Angles that are across from each other. So that's a. a um, out of theorem, I can't. Oh, postulate, I think that you'll use when you do proofs a lot it is vertical angles. That just means angles across from each other have the same measurement. And then, like I said, the other one is linear pair. So linear pair is the 110 and the 70. Vertical is the 110 and the 110, or the 70 and the 70. So vertical angles and linear pair, you're going to use all the time when you solve problems, do proofs, everything. But yet, as soon as we move away from them and get into other stuff, kids seem to forget all of them. Uh, so we went through a lot there. I know not a ton, a ton of practice time, but you have... I'm going to give you like maybe by the time we get set up, I'm going to give you like 30 minutes to do that district quiz. You don't finish it, just it's multiple choice. You're just going to, I think it's not that many questions. So we need to practice for that quiz. That's it. more time than I thought to go through it. Way more time. I'll probably go through it faster than the other class. Uh, uh, here, I'm going to write. So these are this is the assignment. This is for the video. Uh, the assignment was page 67, 1 through 17, and 34 through 36. You should be able to do all of these now. So if you want to practice those, there is also 
an IXL assigned. So if these are too difficult, then you want to try to do the IXL. But you guys are going to have to be accountable for your own grades. If you're only working in, in your classroom time, it's going to be tough to do well in here. So either do the IXL, the, the, the assignment in the McGraw Hill online book, or the book pages if you want to work on those at home, but you can't really get help for using the book pages. Unless you go back to the examples, that's a little help. 